Hey guys, this is Sean Walla, also known as Sean Your Realtor. Yo. Continue to educate yourself because this business is always evolving. Just continue to learn. With it, talk to you guys later. On my third episode of the Strictly Free Game podcast, I have one of my favorite people in the entire world. And I'm not just saying that, you know that already. My favorite person in this real estate business, this real estate space, Stacey McFadden, who I consider like a big sister, a mentor, and I'm saying that wholeheartedly, you know that already. Um, I'll, let, I'll let you introduce yourself though, first. Stacey, can you, can you introduce yourself for the people out there? I'm Stacey McFadden. I work at Signature Premier Properties in Babylon Village. And she's busy. So the phone's going. Sorry, I don't have my Yeah, so <laughs> Stacey McFadden, Signature Premier Properties. Like I said, she's like a, a, a big sister to me. Um, I knew she wasn't going to give too many of her accolades, so I wrote some things down anyway, because I know you. Um 2019, number one in units sold, number one in GCI, gross commission income, number two in volume. 2020, number two in units, number three in GCI, number three in volume. So Stacy is a big deal, even if she doesn't like to say it herself. Um, so Stace, I, I think we've known each other for maybe like two years now, right? Like two mm -hmm. or three years, I forget how long it is. Um, and I've always looked up to you for many things. Yeah, your business, the way you the way you handle business is one of the the biggest um things that actually attracted me to you because I'm like, Stacy kills it, right? She does 40, 50, 60 deals a year. She's humble as hell and she's always willing to help everybody. That's why I say she's like a mentor to me. So Stace, how do you stay focused through doing 40, 50, 60 deals a year? How do how do you keep the momentum going year over year over year? Honestly, I just, I really don't think about it. I just do it. It just, be, it just comes natural. I don't have, like, there's no, it's crazy to say this, but there's no plan. Like I'm going to do this this year and make sure I get there. Um, I'm very fortunate in everything that I've been doing and like and through the business for the years, you know, throughout the years, I got into the business in 2007, which was probably where people have told me it was like the worst time to get in the market, right? Oh, that was right it, that's, crash, when right? Market, that's when the market was crashing. So, you know, tons and tons of inventory and not enough buyers. So it's the complete opposite of what we have going on now. So the days on the market were insane, trying to get a house sold, price breaks. It, it was just bananas, but that's all I knew. So getting into the market at that time, it, I never looked at it as it was a bad thing. I just looked at it as that's all it was. So that's what you knew, that's what you learned. And honestly, I think the obstacles at that time probably helped me throughout the years and, you know, get better and do things differently. That makes sense. So if, if you could go through that, if you could start at that point of the, the, the crash, everything else pretty much is easy after that. I mean, if you could survive yeah, that, because a I, lot of people probably couldn't even, a lot of people probably quit a year or two after that that yeah. you probably started with. Yeah, definitely. And you know what, it, it honestly, it really just was, you learned a lot because there was so many challenges at the time. That's just from my experience, like that's when short sales were just becoming a thing. So I remember speaking to people and them telling me that they owed more money than their house was worth and not knowing what to do. And I didn't know what to tell them either because I never came across anything like that. But fortunately at the time, um, I worked for Century 21 in West Islip and my broker there, he was an attorney and he did short sales. So he was familiar with the whole process. So he definitely helped you know, that definitely helped tremendously at that time to be able to sit down and talk to people and be able to have an attorney in your office that you worked with, mm -hmm. you know, to help you, you know, navigate through all those crazy deals. Wow. Okay. So what actually, not to backtrack that, what got you into real estate? Like, how did you, how did Stacey McFadden say 2007, I'm going to get into real estate? <laughs> funny um I worked for the Port Authority from when I was 18 years old and I stayed there till 2005 and after I had my fourth child because I do have four kids I see them in and, <laughs> at that time yeah and at that time they were young my, my youngest was only 18 months at the time oh, but wow. I stayed home in 2005 when I decided to stop working for the Port Authority 
and decided I have four kids, daycare is so expensive. It just doesn't make sense to go to work. Um, 9-11 changed a lot of things at my job at the time. So it was just time. And I stayed home for almost two years and I loved like children and hang out with them and, you know, being a stay at home mom. But at the same time, I missed working. I've always worked, you know, it's, I'm working since I'm probably 12 years old babysitting. So for me, it was just, so what can I do that I can be there for my kids at the same time, still make a, you know, decent living, um, but interact with people. My mom was a real estate agent my whole life. So my, oh, I, I grew that. up around real estate. I didn't so, know yeah, that. so my mom's a realtor. She still has her license, but she's actually in the referral program at Signature now. Wow. Um, so I was, I grew up in around the business going to her office after work, you know, after school and everything, like, cause it was up the block from my elementary school and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was familiar with the business. Um, and at the time that's when the market was crashing, like the people were starting to like buy the foreclosures and stuff and the flipping of houses. And that always intrigued me, like taking something that was like a, you know, crappy type house and bringing somebody to it and getting them to fix it up and selling it again. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was like interesting also. Did you give a lot of input when it came to like working with developers, the flippers like that? Did they always ask you for your design style? And cause you have an amazing style. I'll definitely tell you that off the bat. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely consulted, you know, I have an investor that I worked with primarily for the, you know, a good bulk of my career. And, you know, he was, you know, great. So I learned a ton of, ton of things just throughout the process as a real estate, working with him, working with foreclosures and, you know, how the process worked with buying them and fixing them and title issues and all the, all the different things that came up across it and learning about houses and renovations and, you know, every time something went wrong and how to fix it and watching the guys fix it, you know, you just learn everything. So that's why I feel like it brings so much to the table of all the things that I've learned over the years to my buyers, you know, things to look out for just because in a normal regular sale, you don't always mm -hmm. see everything, you know, everything, most of the houses you walk into, they're in great shape and you don't see behind the walls or behind the scenes of what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, but you learn what a 200 amp electric panel is, yeah. what a hot water heater is, like all the things that you didn't really know. Yeah, so we're not know? just we're not just door openers and uh, describing how beautiful the kitchen is. We actually <laughs> we're looking at things like that, especially like the sub panels and how many watts and you know all that all that good stuff that's coming involved with it as well. Yeah, just like the little things, like noticing that wait, it's oil heat, but there's no oil tank in your you know sites anywhere. Where's the oil tank? And realizing it's probably underground. You know, a lot of realtors overlook that stuff because they don't know. You know, if they never came across it, how would they know? Yeah, yeah, and that's right? the IP so, detail. So the more the more deals that you do throughout the year, it's like the more interactions that you have on different properties and different kinds of properties, you come across a lot of different things that you you know that you just put in your toolbox for information later. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what? So the, the to keep track with that. So what, what advice would you give to like a new agent? Someone that's just starting out, they have no idea what they're doing. They just went out with their first client. They don't know what to look for because you know, getting into this business, going to a brokerage, they, they sell you a lot of different things. They tell you, we're gonna have training, we're gonna have this, that. And they usually, once you get there, it's usually all on you. So what advice it's would a top producer- all on you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always on you. So yeah. what would a top producer like yourself, what a, what advice would you give to a brand new agent or even someone that's been in the, the business for a little while now that's trying to get some traction in their business? I'm talking about somebody like myself. They're trying to get some traction in their business to get to like the 50, 60 deals a year. Like what advice would you give to them? Okay, so I'm going to start with my 2007 realtor self, like things that I wish I would have learned at that time or would have done differently at that time that would have maybe helped me more, you know, not necessarily quicker, but make things easier along the way. And one is definitely find a mentor, somebody that you can work with, somebody that you admire or you look up to, you know, that you can try to emulate and, you know, see if they need help with anything and be there to help them for anything and know that you're not gonna get compensated for it, that you're, you know, it's on the job training, but it's free on the job training. And it's worth its weight in gold because if you can get that and you can find somebody that you look up to and they're willing to let you shadow them or help them at open houses or 
cover an inspection for them, anything like that. It's, it's so worth, you know, well worth your time because mm-hmm. you learn like in the beginning, I talked to everybody. So every time I came across an Asian, it didn't matter what company they were with. It didn't matter if they were in my competition. If I was, you know, we went to broker open houses a lot at that time, yeah, you know, it was really a different is. market than it is now, obviously, <laughs> but you know, you met a lot of different agents and, you know, when you were on your inspection with somebody who sold one of your houses or you sold their listing and the other agent is there, we just would shoot the reason chat. And then you pick their brain, you ask them questions and everybody's always willing to give information. You know, mm-hmm. most realtors, you know, you don't really come across any realtors that can't be bothered talking to you about anything and not giving you them, giving you advice or anything. Mm-hmm. So I always just talk to everybody about everything. And if I had questions, I would ask them. I would ask about how do you do your marketing or how do you keep in touch with your clients? So that's the one thing I would totally recommend out of the gate. And then the second thing is start your CRM for day one. Yeah. Your contact management, your contact relationship management system is the most important thing that you'll ever need. If you work your database and you work your clients and you not just necessarily work them, but you keep in touch with them and you keep track of everything. It just makes your life easier, you know, out of, you know, I don't know, just, I think it just makes your life a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as your, your, your CRM, how do you, how do you start? I mean, not how do you start your CRM? How do you structure it to, to get to a point that you are constantly following up with them? If that makes well, sense. Yeah. I mean, you, there's different ways you keep in touch with your con- your clients, right? You know, you're going to, oh, wait, you just, just keeping track of what you've done along the way and keeping track of your buyers or your sellers and keeping in touch with them. Um, I'm not the one like every, you know, the first week of every month, I'm calling everybody from letter A through L. Like I don't do that type of thing. It's more natural for me. Um, I, you know, I just keep in touch with people as I need. If I see something that I remember about a client, like, oh, they, you know what, they were interested in this. Let me send them some information. So, you know, I'll text them. Um, I send different mailings and stuff throughout the year. I reach out to them to remind them to apply for their star credit in the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. Or I reach out and say, hey, do you want to grieve your taxes if you know, you know, you know anyone? And that's why I say I kind of, um, I follow your lead. Every time I see, I'm like, what the hell is Stacy doing? If I see that Stacy's doing it, I'm going to just emulate the same thing and I'm, I'm going to do it as well. That's why I admire everything that you do because you still do the, the little things that count that's going to keep the business flowing down the line, down the pipeline. Yeah, I mean, it's just, listen, real estate's all about relationships, right? You know, you have to be a people person to be in this business. You have to like people. Mm-hmm. You have to want to engage with people. And you become really close with your clients during the transaction. And then the transaction is over and then you move on and you go on to the next person. So we tend to forget about who we worked with and what led us up to that point. Um, but I, you know, you just have to keep in touch with people. And they're going to be your biggest supporters. Most, the, like 98% of my business right now is referrals, mm-hmm. which speaks a lot. Like there's no money spent on marketing and no magic, like spend $3,000 a month on Zillow to get leads or, mm-hmm. or any of the crazy stuff. Like there's no fluff in what I do. It's all 100% me keeping in contact with my friends, my family, my clients, and they've trusted me fortunately through the years with the business and they just refer me out to their, you know, to their friends and family. Yeah, yeah. And I learned the opposite when I first got my license. I started with a brokerage in Queens when I, you know, when I originally got my license, <laughs> I did no research at all when it came to the brokerage. I literally found them on Craigslist, went to the office and like signed all the paperwork right there. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And the, the broker, he was, he did, he did sales and he was a broker as well, but his thing was all transactional. He didn't care about having relationships with anyone. Once the deal was done, it was like on to the next one. And it was, he was all about like door knocking, cold calling, which I cringed at that stuff. So it took me a little while, especially like I said, when I, when I moved to Long Island, it's just a different animal in Long Island than the boroughs anyway. Like, you know, that it's absolutely it's totally <laughs> different animal. and Long Island is more, what I noticed a lot of the top agents are more relation is more relation relationships with their sphere and they get referrals and, and so forth and so forth. But yeah. So, um, like I said, I definitely admire that about you because you do keep that going and everyone I know that's around you pretty much do the same exact thing. You're, you're a mentor to all of us, which brings me to the next question. I have. Well, 
I want to backtrack a second though, because I think it's interesting what you just said, like coming from Queens, right? And mm -hmm. I came from the Bronx. So an interesting fact that not a lot of people know is I didn't move to Long Island until 2001. And then I got my license in 2007. So I'm not from Long Island. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any, you know, I didn't have family out here or, you know, a, friends or anything like that. So we just plopped ourselves here. And when I got into the business, I was like, how am I going to get business? Because mm -hmm. I don't know anybody. And the brokers that I work for did have us knock on doors and do all of that stuff. And that's why I said, like, going back to my 2007 self, I would totally say to start your CRM then. Because I didn't, it took me probably five or six years before I started one. And really, you know, cult, you know, I kept track of everything, but I never went and worked my database, so to speak. You know, I just, it was a kind of more transactional. And mm -hmm. I learned as I went on and as I was doing business that that's really, it's silly because it's silly to, to dump your money into wasteful things when if you did such a great job for somebody, why wouldn't they refer you? If I go to a great restaurant and I think it's, you know, amazing, the food is amazing, I'm going to refer that to my friends. If I go to somebody for a massage or a facial or anywhere, I'm always referring people out you know, mm -hmm. for things that I do that I, you know, contractors that I use or anything, because what best person to give you advice, you know, on somebody who used you, you know, mm -hmm. not just going in the yellow pages and picking out a random person and people trust us. I mean, they're making one of the biggest purchases of their life mm -hmm. and they're putting so much trust in us. And why wouldn't you want somebody that you feel that you can count on that's going to be there for you and answer the phone and ask your questions, talk you off the ledge when they're having a breakdown, like, oh my God, am I gonna have any money left after I go to the closing table? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, how is it gonna work out? So if I can if I can get into this business without, without knowing anybody and accomplished everything that I've accomplished throughout the years, you know, and grow my business to where I've grown it, anybody, anybody can, you know, it's just, it's, called work. You got to put the time in, yeah. you know, it's just no, nothing's just falling on your lap. It just, you don't just show up and here's all your business. Your brokers aren't going to give you the business. That's not what they're there for. And, you know, paying people to do it, you know, some people do it and they're successful at it and that's great for them. But at the end of the day, people want to work with who they can trust and rely on. Exactly. It's, it's a relationship business. I mean, we're, we're customer service driven at the same time. So why not have those those touches with people? I love it. I mean, I, I have most of my, the business I do is all referrals as well. And post COVID, I was going like, I was invited to baby showers, barbecues. And, <laughs> and you had the barbecue. I'm like, oh, I sold her house, then my house. It feels great. And they're all yeah. advocating for you. Like, hey, this is my guy or this is my girl. So I think that's the best way to, to get business now. Especially, so how, how has 2020, because that was, a you know, we were shut down for a year. Ha, has 2020 changed your business? Have you adjusted, added any new things to your business since 2020? Honestly, I haven't. Um, you know, we shut down for a couple of months and, you know, you it definitely changed the way we did business. It, it removed us from a lot of it, especially in the beginning. I mean, that was, that probably had to be the hardest thing was, meeting, getting referred people that you've never met before and walking them through transactions where you actually never even met them in person. Mm -hmm. My first client, I was referred a client in May. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, in April. And that's when we couldn't show houses, right? We couldn't even make appointments for, you know, we couldn't make appointments for them. They, it was just like, okay, here, these are the houses. And then they were, they were expected to now call and make the appointments. Mm -hmm. It was just so crazy. And when, I, you know, we went into contract, they found a house during COVID. And when we went to the walkthrough, it was the first time I met them in person. Oh, really? <laughs> at the walkthrough, because we couldn't go to the inspection. We couldn't go to anything. Wow. Um, and then we couldn't go to the closing, which is, which is kind of sad because that's like the most fun part of everything is like, mm -hmm. yeah, you go to the walkthrough, but the fun part is when they're getting, they're signing everything and getting the keys and looking at the, their excitement on their face. Yeah. So to me, that's my favorite part of the closing, you know, Same here. hugging them and congratulating them. And now you can't hug anybody. You can't do anything. <laughs> we can't even so, go to closings anymore. No, Not you least. can't do any of that stuff. So that to me is probably the hardest, but I didn't adapt anything different. I just still did what I did and, you know, kept in touch with people. And once we opened up everything, just everybody was out there off 
obviously, because there was no inventory and the interest rates were coming down so low, mm -hmm. everybody wanted to buy. Um, so yeah, I ended up having a great year. It wasn't my best year in the past 10 years, but it was still a great year. <laughs> it was still a great year, yeah. With all things considered, yeah. of course. Now, yeah. so I, I'm looking at the photo behind you, right? And I have a, a question because this is another thing that I admire the hell up uh, about you. How do you manage your work and your family life? Because I, I, Stacy works her, her butt off, but she also enjoys every mile. Everything I see that your kids are going through, you enjoy everything with them. How do you balance that? Because I'm not, not to cut you off, but you have some agents that's always like work, 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 work. Family could wait till later. How does Stacy McFadden balance the two? Well, in the beginning, there was a lot of sacrifice. You know, there was a lot of missing my son's football, uh, football games, baseball games, different functions that I had um, because there was always do an open house, you know, take your buyers out, working from, you know, nine to six on Saturday and Sunday. So it was hard in the beginning, but honestly, I have the most supportive husband. He helps me so much with everything that, if I wasn't, if it wasn't for him, honestly, I wouldn't even do half of what I get done. <laughs> he helps with everything. And my kids, I, you know, I love my kids. I love my family and I love my friends and we all do so much, but you just have to figure out the right balance. You have to figure out what, you know, work is important, but so is everything else. And I think COVID proved that to a lot of people, like it made everybody reconnect. It made everybody slow down. Mm -hmm. So but it also made you value every, your relationships with people yeah. as far as, at least for me. And it made you realize like life is too short to just be working constantly. You have, mm -hmm. there's a good balance to do both. And if you, if you're organized and you stay on top of your things and you know, you do what you need to do. If you keep your system, a system going every day, you need to keep your schedule consistent. Like, you know, there's certain things that you have to do every day that you have to get done. And, mm -hmm. you know, you figure out the balance when, as you're going along that you can make it work. But you really, you know, having a supportive family is a big part of it. Definitely, definitely. And, it, and speaking of uh, like schedules, do you give yourself a daily schedule? Um, I do. There's certain things that I, I want, I get done every day, like that I, you know, check on, you know, Monday mornings is always the craziest because you know, you have the weekends and whatever went on on the weekends, whether you had an open house and you had multiple offers. Um, but also it's my Monday is my follow-up day. That's when I go through anything that's in contract and see where are we at, you know, was the appraisal ordered, was the commitment in, you know, all the follow-up stuff of, you know, what's ever going on on all my transactions. Um, but every morning, you know, I do check my emails, you know, check in on people, how are you doing? Um, you know, follow up with my clients. And, you know, go to the gym, do the usual things that I need to do. And then however the day falls, you know, you can't really plan too much because you can think you have nothing to do today. And then all of a sudden it's yeah. seven o'clock and or it's one o'clock and you're making appointments for four o'clock because somebody wants to go out and see three or four houses. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's unpredictable. So that whole, I, I have my own schedule, I'm my own boss thing. When people usually get into real estate, I tell them that that's definitely not going to happen at the beginning. It's definitely not going to happen. Um, it was so hard in the beginning because I came from a business background, right? I worked in an office. So you showed up at work and you got your, you know, you knew what you had to do every day. It was, you know, you, everything was very regimented and you knew what was coming next. You knew what your tasks were going to be. And in real estate, it's the most unpredictable, unplanned anything. No matter what you plan out, even if you're booked solid for the whole day it does anything can change at any given mo money uh, moment and throw a monkey wrench into all of that yeah you know so being able to adapt to change is huge you know being able to juggle it and and organization is definitely key you have to, and responding to people getting back to phone calls text messages emails yeah. you know communication is everything yeah and that's where a lot of realtors fail in this business. Oh, they, you know, it's, it's really not hard when you, people submit offers. I understand you can get 30 offers on something, but that's what your phone is for. And that's what text messaging is for. You know, it's just very easy to, to send out quick things to people. And that's, a, to me, it's probably the most frustrating part in real estate right now. The lack of communication amongst 
realtors themselves. Yeah, I just had the same situation a few days ago where it was a multiple offer situation. The agent said that the seller was going to make a final, our best, it asked best and final, he was going to make a decision by, I think, Saturday. Um, Saturday night came, Sunday, no response from the agent. So I called them, the agent, I'm not going to say name, but what's going on with the offers? Oh, they accepted the offer already. They were like, what, were you going to tell anyone else? It's just no communication okay. at all anymore. I had that also. And she's like, oh, I thought I got back to you on Tuesday. I'm like, no, yeah. you didn't get back to me. And it's okay. I understand that they're going, you know, I may not have had the best offer. I get all of that, but let me know. Cause my buyers are texting me 20 times a day. Did you hear anything yet? <laughs> so it's, it's annoying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it makes you look bad. It makes, and it makes us look bad to our clients. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the biggest thing I could, another takeaway that if I could give anyone advice on a real estate agent level, have communication with everybody, with the, our fellow community. It's so important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if the house isn't able to show, put, put a note in the realtor remarks. Like put, you put anything that you want so that people know what's going on. That's what the realtor remarks are there for. Yeah. You know, yeah, and if, read you, the remarks. if they're not showing till after four o'clock during the week, either shut up, set up your showing time to indicate that or put it on the notes, you know, stop wasting people's time. Yeah. Very much. Please stop wasting people's time. What yeah. is the next step for Stacy McFadden? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> no no co coaching, mentorship. I mean, I've done coaching in the past, and I, I definitely, I'm, I believe in coaching. I believe in mentoring. Um, I'm not currently doing coaching now. After a while, you we all know what we need to do. If you just have to be accountable, and if you're accountable to yourself. You don't have to keep paying everybody to tell you to be accountable because if you're some, you can pay somebody thousands and thousands of dollars. They're never going to make you accountable. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, Oh, did you do that yet? And you'd be like, no. So if you can't get yourself accountable for yourself, then don't even waste your time or money in investing in anything, you know, start with yourself, commit to a, commit to a, a process for yourself that you'll commit to. And if you can do that and then you feel like you need the next step, then spend the money on a coaching, then, by all means do it, but I don't- I think some people I think they need the accountability. I think some people think they need that. But like you said, yes. people still fall short. So the day before you meet your coach, you're like, oh, I didn't do any of the lessons. <laughs> any Anything that was planned the whole week, right. I didn't do anything. So let me try to cram everything until today, which it never really works out like that. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Have you ever thought about coaching anyone? No. I never really did. I mean, I will help anybody. My phone is always on. I'll, I'll, anybody ever needs anything, I will help them with whatever I can help them with. But um, coaching, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to get Stacy. We're gonna, we're gonna convince Stacy. We're gonna start a petition to get Stacy to coach or be a mentor or something like that because you, you are I'm that. Huh? No, mentoring, mentoring. I'll mentor anybody who wants it. You know, I have people that reach out and ask me for help and I'm always there to help them. Okay. So Listen, so if you guys know Stacy, reach out to her because she's always not always available because she's busy as hell, but she's always there to help. <laughs> um, so, let's talk social media. Um, I see <laughs> that you, you've changed a lot of things with your social media. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little journey down that lane? What made you switch up your social media marketing? Well, I just wanted, I have a little bit of OCD. <laughs> no, you? No. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just, I like things to be more cohesive. You know, I like things, like, I like to have a brand and my brand to be more cohesive than it had been. Um, I'm not the biggest social media person. I don't do a ton of, I'm not on Facebook all day long. I'm not you know, posting on Facebook and, you know, all that stuff. And I'm not that great at engagement and stuff. And sometimes you're just so busy. Who has time for another added thing that you feel like you're tied to? Mm -hmm. um, I do do go, I definitely go on social media, but I'm not on there 24 seven where I have to tell everybody every single thing that I'm doing every single minute of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I find it useful for a lot of things. I think there's a lot of good information on there. Um, you know, you learn things about people, other people, like what they're up to. Like, that's why I, I like Facebook because I like to see what people are doing. I that's like the only way I can keep up with birthdays is Facebook. 
if it wasn't. Oh, absolutely. If you don't get that reminder in the morning, forget it. (laughs) Um, That's that. And, and I like Instagram because I like to see people's pictures and their moments and things that are going on. Like sometimes Facebook can get a little bit too much, like whether it be, you know, people complaining or bitching about something or political or whatever nonsense it is. Um, That's where I like Instagram because I really mm-hmm. like to see people happy moments, you know, mm-hmm. it, I like seeing their kids or their, you know, many things, children, families, vacations, it gives you ideas of where to go. That place yeah. looks beautiful. <laughs> exactly. So we're not going to see Stacey on TikTok anytime soon? <sighs> no, my daughter tries to get me on TikTok on a regular. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's got me in a couple, but no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind watching it. I learn a lot of great stuff on TikTok. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, TikTok is great. You can get a lot of great tips from TikTok. It's, it's, it's like a better, it's better than Pinterest to me because you get more video, more, more um, different things you can well, grab from TikTok. I love TikTok, even though I don't, I don't TikTok do TikTok to me is, is a combination of Pinterest and YouTube. Mm-hmm. Only in like a 30 second clip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It, it makes everything so simple. But, yeah, you know, because... Definitely. All right. So I'm trying to um trying to think. See, this wasn't this is actually Stacy's first interview. So I feel honored that I was able to interview my someone that I like I said is like a big sister to me, definitely a mentor to me. Um oh you have a new addition to the family, which I see that you're how has that changed? I'm not gonna, you know, we're not gonna say too much, but how has that changed everything? Because I've I've heard just from other people, they said once that happens, like the whole world changes for them. Has that changed? Like, yeah, I mean, so I have a granddaughter. That's what you're saying. I don't, I don't want to say granddaughter. That's okay. It's okay. I guess. Um, I've, She's a um, grandma. She's a grandma, not a grandma. We're not calling Stacey's grandma. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I love her to death. Um, you know, she's everything. You know, it's this the next stage of life, right? I mean, my youngest now is 16. So, you know, now I have a 16 year old and a grandchild still <laughs> to worry about every minute. Um, no, it's changed everything and love her to death. And, you know, it just, it makes family even more special. Definitely, definitely. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. I, I see yeah. the uh, the excitement in your eyes when you post her and all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's a great thing. I'm happy for you guys. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And I think, listen, I think that's it. You got any, uh, anything to add? And where can people reach you if they're looking to, uh, for a mentor? How can they get in contact with Stacy? My cell phone, 917-613-9604. I'm always available to talk to anybody. And you can find on, uh, what's your Instagram handle? I don't even know your Instagram handle. Off the top of my head, I should say. Oh, it's just Stacy McFadden. Oh, she's Stacey McFadden? Okay. So you can reach me on Instagram at Stacey McFadden. Um, Tell us Sean sent you. She's a great person. Great person. I admire to to no end. Um, Stace, thanks. Thank you for gracing me with your presence. I know this has been a long time coming for me, of course. And you did great. Thank you so much. I know you got me on video, Sean. You did it. (laughs) I've been trying. I've been trying for weeks for weeks to get Stacey on video. She did great. Thank you so much. Thank you. You made it easy. Thank you. So I wish you a lot of luck too with your podcast. It is, you're doing great things and you're doing awesome yourself. I'm trying. So I'm trying. Listen, I, I, I've started surrounding myself around the right people. That's how I look at it. When I came into the business, I thought, like I said, I, it was just bad training from the beginning. I thought it was just all about you, 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 you. And it said it's by association. So you are who you surround yourself around. That's why I, I surround yeah. myself around great people like you. I got to mention Dana. If I don't mention Dana Vericchio, she's going to kill both of us. <laughs> Dana is, is definitely someone that's really close to me and Stacy, And um, she's probably calling me now. I don't think like she wanna, so I have to call her back. But um, thank you so much, Stacy. I'll probably yeah. see you within the next like day or so. Anyway, we always see each other. Yeah, definitely. So I'll see you soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon.